All right, my hair good? Perfect. Hey everyone, Joe here, JTech Customs. Hoping to save a few do-it-yourself CNCers some headaches, some money, some wasted time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All surrounding the very affordable option of using a Arduino Uno with CNC shield and DRV8825 stepper drivers for their do-it-yourself CNC project. I've built quite a few machines now, all of which use this same configuration. And I'll be honest, the first time I burned out a few drivers, I watched a CNC board smoke, uh, I wasted time, I had to buy other parts. Again, thankfully they were inexpensive, but at the same time, they're just a waste. So recently I've seen quite a few posts, uh, especially on the CNC related groups on Facebook, mostly surrounding problems that people are having with this setup. And I feel like the tips I can provide today will prevent a bunch of that. So let's just get to it. Number one, most important rule in my opinion surrounding this setup is you can never supply power to the CNC shield when you have a stepper driver attached to a driver socket without having a stepper motor attached to the corresponding driver socket. So example, in case I need to spell it out for you, if I take this ADA25 chip and I were to put it here in the X axis, like so, and I power this board on without connecting a stepper motor to that four pin connector here, you might as well consider this driver is pretty much garbage instantaneously. It will ramp up power. There's no resistance from the motor. This thing fries itself. I'm serious almost immediately. So don't let it happen to you. Make sure that if you uh, supply power to this board at any point in time, if you have a stepper driver in a slot, you better have a stepper motor connected to that same location where that driver is toast. All right, next tip, specifically regarding the stepper driver, this DRV8825 driver. I highly advise that before you ever put a single driver onto the board, you adjust the total current to zero. And to do that, you simply adjust this tiny little potentiometer right here, turn that pot clockwise until it bottoms out. All right, so next tip, your stepper drivers, they come with a little heat sink and on the back of the heat sink is a sticky back thermal pad. Remove the sticky back, stick it to the chip and away you go, eh, not so much. The first machine I built, I just repeatedly battled the inability to send full rated current for my stepper motors, which at the time were NEMA 23s, with this sticky back solution. So while, while approaching the rated current, I would repeatedly hear the stepper motors shutting down due to the chip turning off, thermal shutdown, okay? I have since learned to remove the thermal pad completely with a razor knife and use a small amount of a product called Arctic Alumina. I'm sure there's others out there. It's a two part mix, dries in five minutes. It's super easy. I feel like it allows me to send the current without the need to have fans blowing all over the surface of my hardware and it reliably allows me to send that current without thermal shutdown. So let me show you how we do that. This is the Arctic Illumina product that I mentioned previously, two part mix, five minute cure time. It's a one-to-one -one mixture. So I simply make two lines of roughly even length right out of the tube.
You can see a little bit of the thermal paste squeeze out from underneath the heat sink, but don't be alarmed. The product is not electrically conductive, therefore if it touches other components, it won't cause any issues. All right, so last tip. You should now have a DRV8825 driver ready to go. It's set to zero in terms of current. The heat sink is properly installed with a nice thermal paste, so you know it's going to do the job properly. It's time to install it to the board, connect a stepper, power it all on, and then tune the amount of current based on the allowed current rating for the stepper itself. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so here I have my CNC shield and Arduino Uno stack ready to go. The stack is powered on via the 12 volt power supply in my case, and I also have it connected to my laptop. I'm gonna go ahead and touch the negative side of the terminal block with the negative lead on my multimeter. And of course, I'm gonna to touch the positive end, which you can see I have attached to a screwdriver here uh, over onto the pot on the given driver that we'll be adjusting. I have it connected via that little extra whip so that I can adjust and see the results at the same time on the multimeter. I'm going to go ahead and begin turning counterclockwise and immediately you see the current is increasing and now I'm simply going to set it for what will be about half of the allowed current rating for the stepper. The stepper I'm using in this example is a NEMA 17 with a 1.7 amp rating. So I'm gonna safely go a little bit lower, target 1.5 amps, which means this number that I'm hitting will be 0.75. Once you have a great starting point, you can then tweak it to get the maximum amount possible without letting the driver board go into thermal shutdown mode. 